Hello and welcome to the second unit on the IPOP course and uh, in this unit we're going to cover abstractions in the context of network virtualization so we can better understand how fundamentally virtual networks work. So following up on the previous unit, let's try to draw an analogy with uh, virtual machines and how virtualization works in general. So if you look at a virtual machine, uh, the basic uh, operation of a virtual machine is essentially one where some events of interest are intercepted by the virtualization software. In the case of a virtual machine, a uh, virtual machine will intercept events of interest by trapping. And trapping is basically an exceptional behavior that allows the virtual machine monitor to be put into context and begin uh, doing the emulation of instructions. Now, classic virtual machines, the kinds of virtual machines uh, like VMware or KVM, they will trap only a certain kinds of instructions. These are called privileged instructions. And when these instructions are trapped, their behavior is emulated in the context of the virtualized resource. So essentially, the instruction that causes this uh, trap is emulated with the memory state, with the register state, with all the context that's associated with the virtual machine that issued that instruction, not of any other virtual machine. So graphically, going back to our example in the previous unit, suppose you have multiple virtual machines running in a physical system, and the behavior of these virtual machines is such that it is uh, emulated by a combination of the uh, virtual machine monitor, uh, which uh, provides this abstraction of a virtual CPU, and some instructions are natively executed by the interpreter that's, that's really your processor in your physical machine. Uh, that's one of the reasons why virtual machines are fast. Most instructions, the unprivileged instructions, uh, for example, arithmetic operations, logic operations, branches, memory loads and stores, they generally execute directly natively in the physical machine. But once in a while, a virtual machine issues an instruction that is uh, privileged. And those instructions, if they run directly on the physical CPU, they could cause problems. They could interfere with other VMs. They could interfere with the physical machine altogether. So they cannot be executed directly in the physical CPU. And rather, they are trapped. And once they are trapped, they are emulated by being executed in the context of that virtual machine that issued it. And the responsibility here is the virtual machine monitor software is the one that sets up these traps and emulates these privileged instructions in the context of the virtual machine that issued them. So for example, if the virtual machine on the left issued an instruction to halt the CPU, you don't want that to happen for the physical CPU, you want that to happen for the virtual CPU associated with that virtual machine. And the virtual machine monitor is the software that emulates that behavior. Now, in the context of virtual networks, we still have the same problem. We want to intercept events of interest and we want to emulate them in the behavior of uh, the virtualized resource. Now, in this case, it's a network. So we want to intercept messages that are sent or received and we want to emulate the behavior of sending and receiving messages in the context of the virtual network that a particular uh, resource is bound to. So looking at how networks work, um, differently from a computer, you have now multiple devices connected. And these network devices have links attaching uh, them to each other. And the basic abstractions that we have are the sending of a message. So a sender will name a link that they want to send a message out. A device may be connected to multiple links, and you have to specify which link the message goes to. And then you specify a buffer with data that should be transferred over this link. The message then goes over a link, and that could be uh, passing through multiple intermediate devices. For the time being, let's assume that this link connects to devices directly. On the receiving end, there's the abstraction of receiving a message, and again, you have to specify which link you want to receive the message and provide a buffer uh, to copy uh, the message that's coming from the link. And 
that's the typical method of communication that you have between any two devices on the network. Now one thing to keep in mind is this, these network devices are computers on their own. They could be a network interface card in your computer, they could be a switch, they could be a router, and they're basically computers are specialized for networking. And But at the end of the day they are interpreters with storage, so they are machines that can be virtualized like we do virtualize uh, a computer, a server, with a virtual machine monitor. So to give another example, let's look at how a virtual machine monitor and a VPN would work uh, when emulating um, a example set of instructions here. So let's say you have a virtual machine monitor and a virtual machine is trying to write a piece of data B to some offset X in a virtual disk VD. So the job of the virtual machine monitor here is to trap this instruction. You don't want the virtual machine to be able to write directly to the physical disk, but rather to the virtual disk. And when trapping, you will be responsible for taking this mapping between what is the offset X in the virtual disk VD and how does it map to an offset Y in the physical disk PD. So the virtual machine monitor has that mapping and the virtual machine monitor has the ability to establish this mapping and also to issue an instruction into the physical disk. In the context of a virtual network, let's look at the example of a virtual private network. So let's say you have a, an application that sends a message, uh, let's say an Ethernet frame uh, that goes to certain, a certain link L. The virtual, um, uh, this message can be intercepted by a virtual network interface uh, established by your virtual network, and once intercepted, it can be reflected back to a VPN application, for example. There could be actually the si an application running the same operating system. They will take this message, encrypt it, encapsulate it into a packet of another protocol, and send to another link, to a physical link. So we're mapping the, f uh, the link of the virtual network here to a link of the physical network in a similar way that the virtual machine monitor mapped a block of the virtual disk into a block of the physical disk. And basically we're emulating the behavior of these instructions right into a disk or sending a message in the context of the virtual resource uh, that's been, that is bound to.